What up, hustlers? Oh, well, there's a lot to the story, uh, for sure. <laughs> hey, man, we've got all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I, I have well, actually, night. technically, you've got a bit of time at night. It's, it's what time is it now over there? Uh, 9, 9.15, roughly? PM? It is 9.43, 9.43. Oh, 9.43. All right. Well, I know you've got a, a wife and family, so we'll, uh, we won't keep up too much of your time there. <laughs> oh, don't worry. They, they will come on here themselves if, if we're on here awesome. too, too long. You'll see... Little legend crawling and popping up, waving, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I said to my partner because she's uh, she's here today because I, I live with myself, but you know, obviously she'll come over and uh, I've set up because my setup is real basic. Although I got the white screen to try and make it look professional, it's I'm in a kitchen. <laughs> so definitely, said, like, definitely. you go to the bathroom or anything like that, just walk around the second room and uh, you you do whatever you need to do. <laughs> Good setup. Good setup. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah That's definitely, it. man. You know. Um, my story, like I said, in a, in a nutshell, just like you said on the caption, just like you just said in the intro, um, definitely came from very humble beginnings. We're talking, uh, a lot of people came from single parent um, households, but you know. Of course, yeah, mom, you know, same here, mom, yeah. Yeah, you know, and a lot of people have. So I've just seen so many people in those types of situations definitely succeed, and which makes me definitely happy um, being from that same place. But you know, just even add it because, of course, a lot of people have stories. Everybody has a story. Somebody has, you know, pull out the little violin. Like, everybody has <laughs> a story. If you watch yeah. any of these shows on the television, you know, they're like, and then, you know, also, what happened? Okay, so that's cool. So, and then I want my GoFundMe. You know, Hit the link. <laughs> <laughs> right? I had a yeah. goal of 12000 this year. So, I mean, that's what happens on a daily basis. But, so, you know, when speaking of my story, I don't want anybody to ever be like, okay, well, yeah, that's too. You know, anything I'm saying about my story is just to be able to inspire others because I of know course, that everybody yeah. does have one. Um, so, you know, with that being said, man, you know, I had my mother. She was a single parent. She raised me and my two brothers uh, whenever we first moved to North Carolina when I was about yeah. three. You know, I, we were all staying in one room, one bed, one room, me, my two brothers and my mom. Um, Man, being yeah. the youngest of three, right? You know, like so. Hand <laughs> like, me downs and everything. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I saw her do a lot. You know, she worked 96 hours a week, uh, a lot of yeah, different okay. jobs. I, I rarely saw her um, to be able yeah. to raise us. So I always saw her uh, be relentless in a lot of situations and just overcome. So um, that was the, the beginning of everything, right? Life. And, and then as far as me and, and myself, as far as the things I got into and put myself into, yeah. um, just being an entrepreneur where I'm from, if you have the entrepreneur mindset, then you're probably digging into something that's not legal, right? Uh, yeah. so, Man, <laughs> I love, you got to do what you've got to do. You know, your environment, if that's the best you can do to, to support yourself, then I mean, that's, that's it. It's, it's what you got to do. So, you know, there's, there's no judgment there from anyone here. Everyone's so up minded in this community. So, you know, they're, they're so interested to hear your story. Definitely, definitely, man. You know, I'm open with it because at the end of the day, yeah. again, you have to be proud of where you came from. So, of you know, course. Yeah. I did grow up in situations where we were we were heating up our house with ovens. So, you know, I'm talking about not having heat here. And, oh, you know, man, cold showers. I, 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 I sometimes I'll have them now, but it's just because it's just, if it's hot and it's like, well, I know I can have them. So, <laughs> just <laughs> right. from, uh, from exactly. upbringing. So, yeah, absolutely. Exactly, man. But, you know, just seeing that type of struggle from her, just, you know, yeah. always had me in the mind of, I am I have to get out here and get it, point blank, period. I need to make yeah. it happen. So I always yeah. had that mindset. And, um, you know, I have a lot of ups and downs as far as being an entrepreneur or just in life in general when it comes to things. Just like we said, um, I definitely got locked up for doing some things that I shouldn't have been doing. Um, and that was yeah. pretty much a wake-up call for me. Um, and then, of course, you know, you have to bounce back and, I did a lot of other things in between, ended up going down again, um, being homeless, you know, having to make yeah. money to live in a hotel. So you have a lot of, and, and then it's hard to not go back to the same lifestyle that you just got out of, which got you yeah. locked up in the first place. So it's like, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially That's it. being I mean, a person yeah. like me, right? Mm. Like, and being a person like me, I'm like, no, I'm not getting a job. I will find, I, I'm an <laughs> entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. I will make it work. 
So, you know, um, as, a, as an early teen, I actually started a teen club. And I was making $20,000 per month as a teenager. That's awesome. That's so, cool. Yeah. So going from that to going to jail and then having to get out and be homeless <laughs> and having to get a hotel, it was all just yeah. kind of uh, – but, yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty much my – story as far as the growing up phase and then you know like I said when I got older I just started getting a lot of fights and different things and ended up in trouble a mm. lot but I ended up moving to California after I yeah. got out of jail um, yeah I, I was doing music and I ended up going on nas uh, national television on BT wow six and Park. what kind of music so I rap uh, I was doing yeah. rap music so that's cool yeah, so, yeah know, that's you know, awesome I'm a rapper on the you know renaissance man you have to be a renaissance <laughs> man <Okay. Yeah>. 100% <laughs> So, um, you know, I ended up moving to California after I competed on television and I had some success there and different things, promotions and things. And then when that fell through, I ended up moving back to North Carolina. So you'll notice the pattern is up, down, you know, making yeah. 20000 a week, getting locked up, being, you know, it's being just, it's just, it's a, yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, sometimes we get so, stuck in that mindset story. where it's, it's cyclical. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to break out. It's, and sometimes, you know, you're doing so well, whether it is, you know, whatever you're doing, and you're like, oh, shit, I've, I've taken a stumble, and I'm kind of going right back to where I was. <laughs> exactly. And, and exactly. being, you know, strong enough to, to learn from that and get out of it, you know, you've done amazingly. Like, you know, some people don't get out of that, that cycle and that rut. So, you know, props, man. Like, that's, that's awesome. Like, congrats. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And now, um, you know, again, just to cap off, I was living on one of my friend's couches when I first moved back to North Carolina. And yeah. now I'm here. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> we made it. That's up. cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember once because uh, I was early 20s and uh, yeah, it was, it was a short period there. But um, the, the girl I was, I was with at the time, I, I crashed on her couch for a few weeks. Uh, and then a friend of mine, he had bunk beds still. I was like, God damn it, man! Like you, you're like twenty something. Like get rid of that. Like no girl is going to come over here. But, <laughs> but, but by the way, I'm taking one of the bunk beds. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, you're not, man. Listen, you don't have any game unless you can get the girl to come to the bunk bed. If you get her to come to the bunk bed, then you're forever a legend. You know, you got to you exactly. Make up with it. You know what I mean? So yeah. With it, so. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So I, I like a view. So uh, I'll keep the bunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's awesome yeah so tell us more about this this business you started with 20 grand a month for, for even uh for a lot of people now at, at you know say 25 30 35 40 like that's awesome like that's that's actually thanks tina yeah tina said you guys are too funny oh yeah making us blush <laughs> thank you tina. thank you <laughs> yeah but that's the thing i love with the facebook um hey casey i love with the facebook live like opposed to just doing the podcast live this is so much more just engaging because we can see comments and we can actually talk to people whilst they're on. So it's, it's such a fantastic platform. So, you know, everyone listening in, if you've got any questions for Elijah, just, just jump on and, and comment because we'd love to hear from you. So, you know, thank, thank you for your attention. Like, <laughs> we, we love it. So, yeah, man, tell us more about this business because, yeah, for, for 20K a month, that's awesome. Like, when I was real little, uh, I did a, a post the other day in my group, the Niche Entrepreneur Community, and it was about when uh, Pokemon was a big thing. And uh, I'd be hustling on eBay. Uh, this is well before they had all these security measures. So you could see on, on eBay, whenever someone bid on something, you'd see their username. So I'd reach out to every single one of those that had bid and say, hey, like, I'm selling the same product. It's cheaper. Come to my page. You know, I'll hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and as a such a young kid, I thought that was awesome. And then you're like, oh, I made 20 grand a month. Ugh. I'm like, damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what can I say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, like I said, I just, I, I saw opportunity a lot. Um, my mom yeah. has told me some stories before I even can remember. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I'm like, wait, I did that, you know. Well, I used to go to the lake, catch turtles, sell the turtles. Um, <laughs> I got, got them for free, you know, sell the turtles. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got rough the yellow, four ninety nine. Exactly, right? Like, you know, I'll just take the whole $5. I need that pitch, four ninety nine. dollars <laughs> Yeah. Where I'm from, bargain, no. <laughs> but um, whenever I was looking at it, you know, I remember selling my, my birthday cake. I remember, yeah. uh, you know, I lived in a big old, a big, huge trailer park, literally like so many kids in the trailer park. And I was like, all right, look, everybody pay me a dollar to enter the bike race. 
And then uh, at the end, whoever wins will get a, a, a prize. And the prizes were like Cracker Jack box toys and cereal box toys. So I didn't yeah. spend any money on that. Um, sorry, <laughs> my son is Man, I love it. This crazy. hustler's mentality, I love it. Yeah, yeah. So and then, you know, um, you know, they'd race and then they'd win. And that's cool because everybody just paid a dollar, right? And you're probably yeah. going to come out here like three or four dollars. It's the summertime. So, you know, I've got kids doing that. And then uh, whenever I went to elementary school, my favorite hustle as a child uh, is whenever I, I would marry my peers under the uh, slide. I was the official because I noticed that so many people <laughs> were like, you know, being boyfriend and girlfriend so much. And then they break up. And then I was like, OK, I got to make money off of this. So, oh, you know, oh, damn just man. make yeah, things of valid, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, just, <laughs> I just certified it. I'm like, no, you're not really dating unless, like, I marry you under the slide. And that's a dollar. And then it's it. $2 <laughs> to get divorced. So I already know you're going to want to get divorced. You can't marry somebody else until you're divorced. So I charge yeah. $2. But, you know, <laughs> that's so all good. throughout growing up, I definitely had, you know, I had the mind and the money. So then whenever I turned in, in older teens around 18 years old, that's when I was like, well, we don't have anything to do around here. And, yeah. you know, problem solving, you can make the most money off of solving a problem. So I started a team club. And with the team club, you know, I was just charging $10 a head for everybody to get in and, and you know, had a DJ and had something for yeah. everybody to do. And so, you know, you make $4,500, $5,000 in one night and throw, you know, four events a, a month. And yeah. as a teenager, that's really good money. So Oh, man, that's, that's really good. <laughs> that was it blew my mind. Like, honestly, I was yeah. like, oh, I'm really making, okay, all right. But of course I blew all of that money. Like, oh, of course. I was <laughs> of course. Cars, I was doing, <laughs> oh my God. I, me and my wife sit down today and she's like, well, how did you spend all that money? And I'm like, I'm trying to remember. I don't. Baby, I don't, don't want to tell you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's, know. Uh, I don't know. Where books book. and charity. <laughs> But I mean, no, it was charity. Like it was definitely yeah. a lot. Like, uh, you're gonna give back. I gave, but yeah. yeah, I gave to everybody. Philanthropy, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so so that was uh, really good. But then I got locked up, so that was a down. Um, but yeah. for my business now, my my wife and myself own the business now that is cool. uh, forex trading, forex trading and coaching, yeah, uh, rather. You know, so we teach you how to trade in the markets, and um, that's exactly what we're doing now. So that is our main source of income, and. The most lucrative yeah. venture by far that I've ever run across so far. So, yeah, yeah that's so far, cool. yeah, that's it. It's always moving forward, but you know, if something's working for you and you bank good coin, then you know, grow it as much as you can. Like, yeah, that's awesome. And forex is such because it's an international market. It's it's awesome, and it's really interesting just to watch how the numbers fluctuate. Like, I remember it was uh, last year, I think it was, and the Swiss franc just dropped overnight, and everyone was like, "Oh my god, I'm losing my mind!" Like, it was something crazy. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, it was, it was something it was crazy, like, like, something crazy, like twenty points or something, and everyone's just like, "Oh my god, like I'm done." <laughs> yeah, and especially with the type of trading that we do, uh, my wife and I are scalpers, which means by the time you put a chicken pot pie in the microwave, by the time that's done, we can show you how to make five hundred thousand dollars. Like, awesome. you know, we're not those yeah. people that stare at the charts all day. We don't trade forex to make money. We trade forex to get time. We make money yeah. to get time. That's it. So. You know, yeah. we do it very quickly. So, um, yeah. With, good, good. With, yeah. Talking about heart racing. Every time, every time President Trump gets on TV, things happen in the market. Just remember, <laughs> love him or Man. hate him. I don't care. I don't care if you yeah. love him or hate him. But when Donald Trump speaks on television, there are chances to make money. I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, man. After every uh, ele uh, presidential election in the U.S., you just wait for that dollar to just go up. <laughs> oh, yeah. But then exactly. uh, when the wind exactly. blows and his hair shifts a bit, it drops a little bit. Like, oh, sell, sell. <laughs> hey, look, I don't talk about the president. I think they're watching. I don't want them, like, <laughs> Hey, man, they, 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 they are. They 100% like, are. You know what? I'm telling you, they might, like, break the glass and come, like, kidnap us or something. Be the last time uh, After here. this, Facebook's going to, like, decrease more organic reach. So until then... <laughs> I, I don't want any beef with Facebook. I am not on this side on this Facebook. No, I no, love Facebook, you, Facebook. If, yeah, if, if you guys are watching this, then uh, yeah, no, we, we love you. Please, please don't, please don't hurt us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but no, that, that's awesome. So, how how did you get into forex? Because it's it's such an interesting 
um, place to be in. Like it's, it, there's so much opportunity there. And, and if you know how to, how to do it right, then there's so much money that can be made. And it's, uh, it's such an interesting thing to do. And you said you don't even really watch the, the market. So if you're just watching the charts, then you know, even better, man. It sounds like a much easier way to be able to uh, invest. For sure. So, have, I mean, you've heard of Oprah, right? Man, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm just asking. I don't know. So you've heard of Oprah. Most, so you mean the most actually, powerful woman on television at one point? <laughs> yeah, so a actually, Oprah is my aunt's best friend. Really? Wow. No, Dude, I'm just So kidding. much respect. I, I, was just <laughs> I was like, man, you're going to hook me up. <laughs> I don't know anybody that knows Oprah. The closest I've been uh, to Oprah is watching The Color Purple. I don't know if I was kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's, she's an anomaly. No one actually knows if she's real or not. <laughs> right? But you know what? I'm making yeah. a declaration here today. I will meet Oprah, and we're going to show her this clip, and she's going to be like, see? Everything goes fast. <laughs> we're going to be all on her show. Watch. It's going to happen. But, um, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> with forex though <laughs> seriously my wife actually showed me forex um cool. so the story goes that my wife uh, and i were both a part of a, a multi-level marketing company a networking company we are no yep. longer a part of those companies uh I, I, much love to all ml embers out there i'm just burnt out i can't do it i'm old it's, it's hard man it's a grind like it, a lot of money can be made but it is a grind you gotta hustle hard and exactly. you know a lot of respect for those that do it but it's just you know, for, for me personally, the amount of same time invested in that, I'd rather do other things. But yeah, a lot of people were really, really successful in MM, MLM. But yeah, man, like exactly. in and out. <laughs> exactly. And I, I made a lot of money with it. And so did my wife. But at the end of the day, uh, she was in the same company I was, but she was on the opposite team. And so I hated okay. her. And, you know, because she was like on my turf, right? I'm like, like, like are you yeah. like, set tripping? So, so you know, <laughs> with that being said, you know, I hated her. And then eventually through a mutual friend, uh, we actually got on the telephone and, you know, she started telling me about trading first. And I'm like, yeah. no, I was making money with the multi-level marketing company. I'm like, no, I'm good. I don't need to make any, you know, she's like, no, I'm telling you. So she showed me a video and I, and it was like $1,100 in 17 minutes or $1,700 in 11 minutes. I think it was the latter. And I'm like, oh, okay. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I, I get, yeah, I know. You, you see an ad like, uh, or a video like that. And, and so many times because of the amount of shit that's on the net, you're so skeptical. You're like, well, the, the guy that's doing the testimonial now, I'm pretty sure I saw him on five offering his services for video testimonials. <laughs> right? He's like the yeah. all-star testimonial guy. <laughs> yeah. Like that's a good Thanks, thing. Rick, that's fucking that. testimonial yeah. king. Like, oh, hi, I'm Rick. For, you know, for $5, I'll give you a testimonial. <laughs> I just had an epiphany. I had an epiphany, and I'm about to start doing that. I'm about to start writing <laughs> the best testimonials that people have ever heard of. Uh, very talented with writing. I probably can write the best testimonial in like 10 minutes. So if I yep. charge them $27, 10 minutes, I can make some pretty good money. You have yeah, man, that adds up. Birth. You watch the birth of a new brand. I'm going to launch that brand in three days. <laughs> uh, man, I'll tell you what. Five you, you think is... I'm kidding? I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm going to have a logo and a website and everything. <laughs> Yep. Wow. For for investment of fifteen dollars <laughs> because you need three things, a website, a logo, and and uh, graphics. So yeah, five uh, three different services on Fiverr and you set. <laughs> but yeah, five five is great. Video. Like I remember once uh, I had a look the other day, um there it's no longer there, but at one point there was a guy where he gave you a personalized message whilst ironing a shirt. And in addition to that, you know for five bucks, you know when there there was that um that basically the, the everyone would wear the horse heads and it went viral? He would be wearing a horse head mask whilst ironing a shirt for five bucks. And he'd be like, happy birthday, John. <laughs> like, like well, you know what? For I'm five not bucks, doing all of that. It's worth I'm it. Not, I mean, that, that's pretty cool for five bucks. I'm not doing that for five bucks. but I'm Nah, but shit, if you're in a third world country, that's like, that's like a three days wage. So bring it on. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I should start working for euros. Actually. Oh man, I've, yeah. I've, I looked into that. I was like, because I'm based in Australia um, and I've got a, a web design uh, firm. So most of my market is actually in the US just because I'm doing the same amount of work, but I'm making 30% more. I was like, well, makes sense. I mean, sure, I've got to get up 2 a.m. sometimes for client calls, but fuck, like, for 30% yeah. more, <laughs> hit, yeah, that, I mean, you know, hit that alarm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like that. I like that. I might move there. I was going to move there, but I heard that, like, I heard a lot of stuff. I don't know. You never, First, you never I heard know. Like, guys with Wi-Fi. 
Well, is we, your we wife watch Fire? Man, is, is our wife Fire is, is like something like awful. Like, and and in saying that, I had at one point I had cable, and that was downloading um, not at the ping rate, but like you'd actually see it downloading at six megs mm-hmm. a second. I was like, holy mm-hmm. shit, that's amazing. <laughs> and that was like well, the best incident I've seen personally. So, yeah, you, if you're moving here just for the internet, don't do it. Yeah, not doing it because that's the, the, the main thing we need as Forex traders is Wi Fi. Like, yeah. I look, it, it doesn't cut out, but we spend so much money on infrastructure for the NBN, uh, the National uh, was it, uh, Broadcasting Network or whatever. And, and man, like, they worked it out that they'd already started. And by the time they're going to be done installing all the infrastructure, the new technology is going to be ready to be released. So we're then going to be behind the eight ball. So it's like, well, that was a waste of time. Didn't you guys invent or, or find Wi-Fi? Is it Wi-Fi originated from Australia? That's a very good question. I'll tell you what, for, for you guys watching at home, if you're able to Google that for us, because that is a great point. So... Casey, I see you watching Tina as well. So there's some accountability there if you ever Google it for us. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm filled with random facts, man. Like, literally, I can random fact you to death. Oh, man, don't you, don't you worry. With, in one of my friend circles, I'll spit out something that we're like, here we go. Bullshitfacts.com comes out again. This <laughs> <laughs> is just such, that. such random <laughs> arbitrary things. It's just something will come up and then it'll be like, oh, well, did you know this? I'm like, man, we didn't, but we don't care. <laughs> man, you never know, man. You might win a game show with the answer. That's why I, I, I like to, you know, spread the knowledge just in case you're on a game show. You're going to be like, Elijah said that. I know where all that Wi-Fi came from. And then I won exactly. my 10%. Just remember, <laughs> I won my cut. And I'm American. I'm going to tax you. So, you know, with yeah. that means. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but, but yeah, dude, like, I, I didn't mean to give you yeah. No, no, it's good. Like, I was going to say, like, with, with phone lines themselves, I found it such an interesting thing. But did you know that they've got... Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure by now the infrastructure changed, but what they used to have was just on the international water floors was just cables just running just in these massive cement cylinders and they would just run across countries. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Like, think, yeah, think of the mileage on that. that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> as I said, bullshitfacts.com comes out again. <laughs> hey, I mean, it, they, they work. I'm putting that away in my files. I'm going to teach that to somebody tomorrow. Don't worry. Hey, look, double check that it's <laughs> been updated know. since. I don't want you quoting Ross from Ross of 2017 for 2017 facts. So just, <laughs> I'm just saying it originated right. then. <laughs> tight, tight, Ross. Yeah. Definitely. But no, that's cool. So, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, you, need, you need good internet for your business, like hands down. If, if you're doing, you know, micro trades and it's within seconds and minutes and, and things like that, then absolutely, you know, internet is, is just, you need it. Yeah, for exactly. sure. And, and just like that, people go from smiling. Oh, we have an answer. All right, Amanda, let's have a look. Dr. John O'Sullivan is an Australian electrical engineer whose work in the application of uh, Fourier transforms to radio astronomy led to his invention with colleagues of a core technology. Dot, dot, dot. I can't read the rest, but Amanda, thank you so much. So he's Australian. Let's see if that opens. All right, so I can only see half of that, but the fact he's Australian, we'll, we'll go with that. We'll go Australia made Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's three points. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Oi, oi, oi. See that? I, see, I know that. I know that. It's random. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm going to edit this. Afterwards, I was going to do a, um, uh, a post on my own personal uh, page just to promote this. And instead of putting that you're, you know, you're, you're a venture capitalist and, and you're a forex trader, I'm just going to put... Someone that knows where Wi-Fi was invented, stay tuned. <laughs> it looks good on the resume, man. It stands out. Resumes Definitely. stand out. That looks good. That's one, one word, one sentence resume knows where Wi-Fi was created. Automatically. That's it. Just think, well, drops my You need me on your team. You need me on Definitely. your team. Definitely. No, but... Yeah, man. Um, you know, I didn't want to get you off. I got you off track, and I feel sorry. Man, look, I, I'll be honest. Like, it, it's cool. Like, it's it really, it's 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 fun. Like, that's that's part of this. It's you know, I really want to know about your story, but it's, it's just about having a bit of fun. Like the other day, um, we had an author on here, and we were talking about video games for like twenty minutes. <laughs> well, I can't talk about video games because I don't play video games any longer. <laughs> uh, I, I I go on binges sometimes, but then most of the time yeah. I don't. But 
when, when it comes yeah. to like group playing, I'm, I'm really big with just like, uh, say, just if I've got a friend sitting next to me, we'll play tons of FIFA, which is the soccer game. But sitting down on my own, I just can't do it. I just get too bored. Like, I'll buy a game. I'll play it for 15 minutes or an hour or, you know, a day. And I'll be like, man, I'm done. Like, I've just wasted like $49.99. <laughs> no. See, the thing with me is I never play. But when I do, I'm always playing against somebody who's like really good. And then I end up beating them. And then they're really mad because they're like, you don't even have this game. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like Well, that's it. You put yourself know. in a position, yet you're learning. Because, you know, if you put yourself where you're beating or you're playing people at a certain level, you're going to basically just succeed so much more. Because uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but years and years ago, there was a, a race car driver and he would just race in his just local derbies and things like that. Uh, and then to, to get to the next level, he had to win a certain amount and he did that. But then he moved away and he started racing really high level cars. And, uh, you know, being in that environment, just learning from others, from the position he was in, when he came back to the, that second tier race, he fucking crushed it. So, you know, it's something, it's kind of just like learning the best or, or how to win and then working backwards rather than just doing step by step. If, if you can skip the learning curve and just go to the very big, the, the end and then go back. Um, Tim Ferriss actually has a, a series out where he does exactly that, where he'll try to learn a, a new skill, but he'll do it with, I think it's in like five days or something like that. So he'll basically just get all this training from everyone from a top tier level and then work backwards. And so, yeah, absolutely. So, and, and that's funny that you say that because that's actually how I did learn Forex with my wife. She well, showed me trading. And then, you know, so she showed me trading and literally I was just watching her do the one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching with people. And so I was learning on that level, you know, uh, where most people would get an entry level course. You know, I was yeah. looking at it on, uh, on the private one-on-one -on -one, and then where most people would start on a demo account, I started on the live account. So it was like that. But then, you know, I started with $50, turned it into 1500 in two days. Beginners, nice. look, that's okay. I'm <laughs> that $1,500, beginners. So, um, you know, with that, I literally was like, you know what, this isn't sustainable. And then I leveled down, you know, as far as a target. Yeah. And I'm like, every day on an organized level, I want to make this amount this amount, you know, and grew from okay. 75 to 200 to 500 to 1,000 to, you know, now it's like, no, let's make 1,000 a day when it used to be like, ooh, I made 70 today. I just want to make sure that I'm able to keep it up consistently and walk yeah. myself up. So, you know, I learned, you know, from the highest level, went backwards, started back at square one just to make sure I didn't skip anything. And I think that's what makes me such a good coach and what makes my clients succeed is because awesome. we don't skip anything. And that's what you have to do <laughs> that's it. Life, right? I'm like, absolutely. Like, you got to grind through. you got to do every step. Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> exactly. So uh, we've had a question about a uh, cryptocurrency. Have you uh, looked into that or have you really focused all your efforts on Forex? <laughs> Crypto! Okay. So, yeah. Uh, okay. I'll be honest. I, I didn't think this question. was going to come up, but it came up. <laughs> I knew this question was going to come. I'm surprised my lights didn't flicker or something. Okay, so <laughs> cryptocurrency. What I think about cryptocurrency. Oh, man. Okay, that, that's mean, a show in itself. <laughs> woo, okay, all right. So being a Forex trader, being a technical Forex trader, yeah. I make money when the market makes sense. Um, cryptocurrency, you know, if I gave you a Bitcoin right now, and by the time you closed your app on your phone to receive it or whatever, it's going to be worth something else. So, yeah. You know, literally, if you told me, you know, send me $1,000 worth of Bitcoin and I sent yeah. it to you, by, by the time it reached your bank in two to three transfer days or whatever, it could be worth significantly less. So yeah. that's the problem with it working as a currency, right? Now, disclaimer, if you trade Bitcoin, great for you. Please make money. I want everybody to make money. You'll find that out. Of course. That giving back and giving value, 100%. <laughs> but That's it. when you're looking at this, one of my clients, his name is Keith. Uh, you better do it. You better do it. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> so one of I remember clients, I was 20. I just went one and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, at one point I was just doing this with change. So that, that's uh, an interesting story too. But... But yeah, so one of my clients, Keith, he actually trades cryptocurrency and he uses the training that I taught him 
to trade cryptocurrency. Oh, and cool. that's what okay. made me like cryptocurrency all of a sudden. Because at first I was just like, man, this is this is a bubble. People are going to put their money into it. But once people begin to take their money out, is it going to be sustainable? Are people going to be able to actually get these returns that were promised? Because right yeah. now it's just electronic. It's, it's on a computer, right? So, whew, oh man, this is a great question. So, <laughs> you, computer, yeah. you know. Thank you, Tina. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, huh? Yeah. So, me trading fiat currency, I'm automatically thinking, well, this clearly cannot, it cannot be a currency. You cannot, the dollar takes a lot longer for it to change in value. It changes at fractions of a penny at a time, not yeah. $10,000 in two days. So, yeah. while it's great, it's great for people that are invested in it, I just hope that the SEC and the FBI and all, IRS and all of these other acronyms, you never want to hear an acronym, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but with all these other acronyms come after these companies like the USI techs and the, the coin bases and they're making people all of a sudden, crypto is great because you know, it's, non, it's non-trackable and governments can't tax it or control it. But now yeah. all of a sudden, they're saying that Coinbase has to tell you about anybody that has more than 20K of it. All right, so now they're showing you that they can crack down on anything if they want to. There's of course, nothing above yeah. That. And Testing then they're telling you, and things like that. Exactly. And then you have these new laws that are getting passed where now they can kind of control your internet access, in America at least. So if they're telling yeah. you that they can control the websites that you're going to, don't you think it's pretty ironic that that's happening as soon as the cryptocurrency market is at an all-time high? For me yeah. personally, I think you're trying to control something that's getting out of hand here lately. And what's getting out of hand here lately? These renegades, the rebels that are all over the internet saying that this is the beginning of separating themselves from the government. You can't beat the government. You Man, you cannot be. Facebook's watching, Donald Trump's watching, it's it's not happening. <laughs> His hair is watching, it's all. Everything <laughs> is being watched. And at the yep. end of the day, you know, I've had friends say, we can take the government. I'm like, no, we can't. I, Man, I can't. you can't do shit. I don't know how to, <laughs> I can't shoot a machine gun. I don't, I'm not a sniper. I don't know. If they wanted to kill you, they can't. So I'm just going to play yeah. by the rules and, and make a lot of money while doing it. So, but with all of that being said, now that I know that you can actually go in and trade the cryptocurrency with the same tools as a technical Forex trader, that makes yep. it more attractive. But I also know that on those charts, they don't really have method to it. So that's my whole thing about cryptocurrency. If you can make money in it, go ahead and do so. I'd rather yep. you trade it than put it up in a company and let it just sit there because you don't know what that company is really doing. They're kind of just giving you oh, numbers. Of yeah. Um, the, the county that I'm in, Mecklenburg County, somebody just hacked all of the Mecklenburg County, um, the websites, and yeah. have them holding them ransom for two Bitcoin. I want my 20K, bitch. <laughs> I want my two Bitcoin now. So what I'm saying is, for me personally, being that I'm going to be president in 2000, uh, 2032, so with looking at that, <laughs> when I'm in office, I need to understand the dangers of Bitcoin as well. See, because it's great that the government can't track it. But what about yeah. whenever somebody is kidnapping kids and you can't track that money now because it's not feasible, tangible fiat currency, that yeah. whenever you send this Bitcoin, you can't track who owns that account and you can't track them, period. That's what makes it scary. That yeah, you're going to have a, a, an uprising of more hackers and, and smarter criminals. I'd rather deal with the simple-minded criminals than these very, very smart computer criminals. And that's what I look mm. at with Bitcoin. I think that it's dangerous on a lot of fronts. I think it's great on different fronts. But I don't think that yep. it's sustainable and it's never going to take out fiat currency ever. That's exactly. Like o over time, because it, it is quite volatile now, whereas over time it will absolutely more so become regulated to a degree and it will, in essence, level out. So it won't be as up and down as what it was. But, you know, the interesting point you're saying that the government's starting to uh, monitor what you're doing, because in Australia, we've actually had that for quite a while in certain uh, scenarios, for instance, with um, uh, downloading films illegally, like streaming and, and torrents and things like that. Uh, Australia was the... I think it was the or one of the biggest um, 
illegal downloads for um, Game of Thrones at one point. Uh, and, you know, for our tiny little country, like, that's massive, you know. So everyone's just like, free movies, like, fuck off Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying. It. I I'm not paying my twelve dollars. I want free. <laughs> yeah, free. exactly. I mean, so, free cool. so some companies now, uh, and although not all of them do it, but some, uh, including uh, my internet provider, not saying that I've ever done it or anything like that, but uh, basically, um, <laughs> yeah, they, they block certain websites. So, if if there's a website I want to visit uh, in regards to say like a torrent site, it just says sorry, but your uh, internet provider has blocked this website. And it's like, dude, like. There's ways around it. You can get VPNs uh, from the States or overseas and then you just, you know, route your internet usage through the VPN and then, you, you know, you're not being traced as such. But they, they, they can do all sorts of things. Like, they can track that. Um, and even, like, look at the dark web, uh, you know, with Silk Road where, you know, eventually they clued on to what was happening. So although Silk Road hasn't shut down, it's still, and it's still very active, but it's, it's monitored a lot more. Um, and the only reason I know it's yeah. still active is because... Uh, a friend of mine was telling me a story the other day where he decided to, to order something off the net for his house because of a party he was going to. I'm like, man, that's ballsy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know that she was still going. But, you know, so it's, they absolutely can monitor uh, our activities on the internet. And it's, it's, it is scary, it, but it is, I understand, you know, the, the protection of the behind it, like absolutely for like, say, child abductions and things like that. John says a friend ordered on the internet. Right, <laughs> no, exactly. No, right, straight up, it was actually a friend. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah right. who knows? I was going to party. Who knows? <laughs> no, but it, it was uh, yeah. Just it, I completely understand. You know why there needs to be some regulations in these sort of things because for a lot of the time it it does protect us. And you know, not, not that I you know want to live in an oppressed society, but it's really just it, in some degrees. You know, for, for say children's safety and and gun control and things like that. I, I think it, there's so many positives to that. Um, you know, but then, then the question gets raised of, well, how far does it go? You know, how far do people become regulated, you know, in self? Like there was a big uproar with Facebook um, when they started, basically you had to, you know, tick on the app saying, yeah, we approve you to have access to our camera and have access to our microphone and have access to our messages. Because I used to just message off of Facebook and then the Messenger app came out. And then Facebook were getting rid of their Messenger app and basically just having you on Messenger. And they said, from now on, if you want to use the Messenger, you have to go on the Messenger app itself. We are removing our Messenger. And now they've obviously integrated that into Facebook. Um, you know, so it's the same sort of app, but they've only got one avenue opposed to two. And uh, yeah, exactly. they, very easily they can just monitor what we're doing, searching keywords. Um, so you know, things like bomb is, is very common to, to get searched for and things like that. So there are exactly. absolutely positives to it. But at the same time, it's like, well, what if you want to do some, you know, some, some gray area stuff like go to a party and, and order certain, we'll say Bitcoins. <laughs> Bitcoins. Bitcoins. Yeah, that's, uh, right. So, yeah, that's what Tina, Tina was wondering, which one had the, the brightest future. Um, yeah. And, and it's, it's too hard to say. No one can say. Like, no one can really say. They, they can speculate, but. You know, you know what I would tell you? I would tell you, though, to go and find out. What which coins are being Googled the most? If you can yeah. get those Google statistics, it's usually going to be the ones that are rising in the Google statistics because if they're being searched the most, that means that the most hype is around that. If you see people talk about the same coin over and over on your newsfeed, chances yep. are it's time to get in on that because you know these cryptocurrencies they're all fundamental. It's literally like as soon as a hype gets around it, you better get in. So. That'd be the yeah. only thing that I can tell you to kind of tip your hat or to give yeah, you a that's tip it. to that. So, but, uh, yeah. but, but even for that, just from a safety perspective, you know, when just say a company goes public and, and the shares are growing and growing and growing, when one significant shareholder, and obviously, you know, Bitcoin doesn't have, you know, isn't you know, on this scale in regards to it, it's much, it's much greater than that. But for, for stock prices, if a significant shareholder starts dumping their stock, that's going to floor the price. And so all it takes is, you know, a handful of people that have millions and millions of dollars worth of a particular currency exactly. or, and, exactly. and they dump it. And then all of a sudden it starts dropping. Everyone's like, well, shit, now's the time the bubble's popping. I'm getting on that bandwagon and I'm now going to dump right. my stock or shares too. And then mm -hmm. those that I know went out to take a piss and they come back and they're like, oh, well, I didn't expect that to happen in 15 minutes. <laughs> right. Exactly. And, and that's, yeah. that's why it's dangerous, right? Because, 
for me personally, I'm not comfortable with going to sleep with a hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin and yep. waking up with three dollars in Bitcoin. I don't know. Yeah. It's just way too much. For well, you me. don't. So That's it. Like, it's too volatile. Yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. So yeah. Trade at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's that's the the advice we can give for forex. Trade at your own risk. <laughs> um, so Elijah, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you, you were saying as well. So um, you're a venture capitalist now as well. Like that's really interesting. I imagine there's there's a lot of yes. people listening here that have even considered you know getting a bit of VC funding. So do you want to tell us a bit about that? Like that's that's going to be really interesting for for a lot of listeners. So definitely. So whenever you start creating income the income is just sitting there and you're either going to continue saving it and having it sit in the bank or you're yeah. going to want that money to get out there and do things for you. Right. So, you know, for me and my wife, our main things are like, all right, we have some nice capital, you know, either do some things with real estate or do something that you can actually have a passive income with and, you know, recurring monthly income with that's what it's all about. Just having that yeah. money create more money for you. So, of course, I come up and I'm looking at Shark Tank. I've seen every episode of Shark Tank. Awesome. Every single yeah. episode. I've seen every episode. So, um, <laughs> you know, that's my favorite thing. I'm like, I don't want to be on Shark Tank pitching a product. I actually want to be one of the sharks. And it, of that, course. Yeah, yeah. that would be fantastic. I hear you, man. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's simple. I have started different types of companies. And that's what I was going to say as far as like them watching and, and definitely being able to search keywords. Well, I own the social media site. So on the back end of the social media site it was for musicians. And for the back end of that, you can see everything. Their yeah. password, literally everything you can yeah. see. So it's like, I'm very careful with Facebook. I'm like, let me make sure it's a different password than my bank account password. Because yeah, you absolutely. just never know. You know, so yeah. be very careful with that. Um, but yeah, you know, I've started so Great many tight companies in different yep. industries um, that at, at the end of the day, I know the, the core things of marketing. And I think whenever you are an investor, for me, uh, being, you know, having VC, you, you have to be able to, for one, show me a business plan. Everybody's always asking, right? Like, well, how can... How can I get involved? Like, I need a, you know, I, I'm trying to get some money. I'm trying to get some capital. And I'm like, what's your yeah. business plan? And they're like, yeah. I can get one together. And I'm like, all right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, business plan, of course, just look at Shark Tank. Look at what they do. That's, That's pretty much all you need. Um, so, you know, yeah. then, whenever someone asks you, hey, what are your sales? That doesn't mean how many customers you have. That means yeah. how much. One of the I've figures. People, yeah. yeah. I've, I've asked people, what are your sales? And they're like, six. And I'm like, six? What do you mean, six? <laughs> but, six euros, like, six so pounds, just, six bitcoins. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> but, no, they were like, they said six customers. And I'm like, that's, I don't know how much you charge your customers. I still don't know your sales. So yeah. definitely know what you're talking about uh, before you're going in, in to pitch anything. But for me personally, I'm wanting to invest into 12 different startups for this year of 2018. Awesome. So, That's cool. And the reason behind that is the fact that I've been able to start brands quickly and been able to make sure that they're very efficient and to yep. create income very rapidly, where a lot yeah. of people in business, they're in the red for a long time. Well, I, I specialize. I can say that because it's been different brands where it's like being able to put together a plan um, love putting together packages, memberships, things like that. And so, yeah. you know, with me, it's, 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 it's a no-brainer to be able to invest, to either get equity or to get, if they want to set up a debt type of situation, however, if they want private or VC, however. Um, but just to be able to help people out in their brands and to yeah. be able to help them get more money in the long run, you know. As the saying goes, somebody's heard yeah. it. You'd rather... What would you rather, 100% of the grape or 50% of the watermelon? So I'm exactly. trying to just make yeah. companies become watermelons and you know, <laughs> everybody makes more money. Everybody's happy. See, here in Australia, it's pie. <laughs> pie? <laughs> yeah. I like Man, pie. we love pie. All sorts of I pie. pie. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie American Pie? Man, who hasn't seen American Pie? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I bet you have seen the movie out there bootlegging. 
Yeah, like they're taking <laughs> and all the and shit made out of movie. <laughs> He's uh, like, of I, course, I, who hasn't seen that movie? Like, like <laughs> don't Facebook stop listening. No, I I I swear I bought the the VHS back when it came out. <laughs> receipt, receipt. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Amanda says, I can help people with a business plan. Awesome, Amanda. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, there's actually been quite a few people in this group that I've been talking to them, whether it's because I've been discussing, uh, you know, potential business, like, or whatever. But uh, I found this template. It's a 30 page business plan template. And yeah, I've just been sending it out to people. So if you do need it, just, yeah, reach out and I can just send you a copy. It's just a, a Word document so you can put in as much detail as you want. And the fact is 30 pages, it's going to be thorough. So you know that it's going to give exact specification for what a VC is going to be looking for. So yeah, if, if you need that, reach out to Amanda or, or hit me up and uh, yeah, definitely we can uh, have a bit of a chat. And, and, then, and then email your business plan to Elijah at generationblack.com. Exactly. <laughs> Part of your family. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, that's cool. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I'm, I'll be honest, I'm having a lot of fun here. It's, it's, it's really enjoyable. Definitely, me too, man. The one thing, because I'm still new, this is still a newer podcast as well. So I, I need to do a few things. Uh, one of the group members has been really helpful and he, uh, he's going to set me up soon so I can do this on my laptop. Uh, I just got to buy a 1080p um, webcam to put it on. Uh, right now, I'm just on my phone with this tiny little tripod and, uh, and all that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just learning the way. So it's, it's interesting, but it's, it's good fun. <laughs> definitely, so. definitely. Well, trust me, I'm going to uh, definitely invest in a little little tripod, tripod thing because my arms, I've been sitting here like, uh, You're holding it. Workout Damn, routine. man. <laughs> yeah, I've been holding uh, the phone. This is extra credit. I think like I should get a Christmas card or something. Man, yeah, look, well, we always do a shameless plug at the end, so we'll, we'll do that. Plus, I'll tell you what, when I do promote this on my uh, personal page, I'll even drop the links in there as well for you. <laughs> for but sure, that's Afterwards, you'll, you'll have one massive forearm and one, like, normal arm, and your wife will be like, when, when you're on the phone to a guy for, like, an hour, like, what, what the hell have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> she, she's right here, too. She's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, no, but that, that's awesome. So, um, yeah, basically, like, so you're, uh, yeah, the, the VC, that's, that's really helpful information for those that are, you know, looking to start up and, and it's so helpful. Yeah, business plan, 100%. Like uh, Amanda said here, the executive summary is the best part. I thought nobody wants to read 65 pages. Amanda, as much as, it depends who your audience is. If it's for a VC, they're absolutely going to run through that with a fine-tuned comb. So it really, if it's a friend of the family, then yeah, they're, they're not reading 65 pages. But when these people yeah. are actually investing their money and they're investing in you, then they're absolutely going to read it. But do the executive summary last because you want to actually finish your business plan. You want to get it sorted. And then from there, you then write your executive summary. So little tip there for everyone at home. Um, Although Elijah would be uh, much more profound in knowledge and realize the business plans. I thought, hey, it's, it's my podcast. I'll at least offer something today. <laughs> hey, man. Honestly, honestly, I will read through everything. And if I see something misspelled, I'm probably going to pass because I'm just a grammar Nazi like that. But, um, <laughs> but at the end of the day, honestly speaking, there have been companies with zero sales and a very shaky business plan that have appealed yeah. to me way faster than companies with sales um, and with a very solid business plan based off of who the people are, based off of if I think that they're very passionate and all in about it. Can I trust them with it once I leave? Are they coachable? Yeah. Are they, you know, because I'm coachable. Regardless, if, if even I come into your company and I'm like, all right, let me write you this check for whatever percentage, knowing that yeah. if even if I have more business knowledge than you, I still need to be coachable and be a student at the of same course. time. Absolutely. And, it's know, all about learning. You know, right? So it's, you, you can't ever be just a teacher. You have to be a student too. So, you know, I'm very coachable. So I want to work with people that are coachable as well, where you're able to do brainstorming and say, all right, like this is bouncing ideas off of one another, not one over the other. We are peers. We're partners. Let's make sure that we're able to create uh, an expansion plan for this brand better than ever because then it helps both of us gain some extra capital. So for sure, <laughs> definitely. But, you know, my, my main things are, man, like definitely just making sure that they're passionate about it. And if I think that I can sell the product, it doesn't matter how much sales you've made so far. It's about what mm. I can bring to the table. If I think that I can turn it into something that can make six figures in the first year, second year, third year, whatever, then 
chances are I'm going to jump on it. I just kind of want, yeah. you know, some money back. So, um, yeah, yeah. But I, I, what I love is being able to break down the science of marketing to people, though. Um, I didn't know that I loved it as much as I did. Uh, but when I start talking about it, just about capitalization with logos and color patterns and all the science behind marketing, I think that's what a lot of people are missing because they like to be flashy or something, but they don't know the simple rules behind marketing to make their yeah. brand appeal subconsciously. So, Man, that's awesome. Yeah, this is really insightful. So yeah, I appreciate you so much for being on. Uh, this is awesome. So everyone, if you're tuning in uh, and you're on the replay, if you can type in hashtag Team R, let it for replay. We'd love to hear from you to just make sure that, you know, this is actually reaching ears. And uh, I mean, we can see everyone watching live. So thank you so much for giving us your attention. But we'd love to hear from you. And that way, uh, in the future, if you've got any questions, you're basically commented and posted within this so we can always jump on. Elijah can ask questions for you. So, uh, yeah, man, thank you so much so far. So is there anything else you want to touch base on before we get to our uh, shameless prog plug promo? <laughs> base on? Um, I don't know. No, nothing that I, yeah. All right, and man. If, no, if we'll, they have any questions, uh, I'll answer those, I guess. <laughs> yeah, awesome. All right, so what we'll do then, uh, if you're, you're cool, I one thing I have... I need to improve with this because it's on my phone, then I have no concept of time right now. We could have been talking for 20 minutes, two hours. I wouldn't be able to tell you. I've been having a lot of fun, so I really have no idea what time it is. <laughs> uh, it and is I know you stayed up a bit late to uh, to this for me. 10.30. All right, so we've done pretty well. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, um, yeah, basically, man, thank you so much. So, everyone, Elijah Bryant. Uh, so, Elijah, what services... Obviously, we've gone through them, but, you know, as a very condensed uh, section for the, uh, the shameless plug, uh, you know, what services can you provide or offer? Um, and we'd love you to drop the links in below as well afterwards, just so everyone can reach out to you if need be. Okay, perfect, perfect. So in order to reach out to me, well, no, I'll do that last. Uh, but for the services, as far as our Forex services, um, you can go to generationblack.com. Um, yep. That's... I don't have to spell that out. <laughs> but, <laughs> I think you're right. I think, I think most people are pretty good here. <laughs> cool, cool. So, yeah, it's called Generation Black. So, generationblack.com um, is the website. Uh, we yep. offer different memberships, uh, different coaching options, uh, private one-on-one. -on -one. You can contact us to work that out where we do webinars, um, you know, because people are all over the world. We're not about to travel everywhere. Uh, but yeah, one-on-one -on -one webinars, you can get that. You can also get the group coaching. Um, you know, some people like to learn in groups, get questions asked by others that they didn't think of. Some people love to work by themselves. They don't want others to ask questions on their time. So <laughs> we have both of yeah. those options for you. Don't worry. Uh, so those are the two ways that you can learn as far as live. And that'll be with me or my wife with private or in me and my wife with the group. You get double. It's like Reese's. You get two instead of one. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, and, yeah. then, and then with um, you also have the, the, the pre-recorded curriculum that you're able to get okay. as well. So if you're a person that wants to go ahead and get the little modules and pre-record it, you can do that. If you'd like to do live group, you can do that. If you'd like to do live uh, private one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that. Please look at my page. You will see so many testimonials. It will make your head explode, and you'd be ashamed not to coach. Absolutely, so and we, we promise Rick from Fiverr won't be one of the testimonials. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these, no, these are real testimonials. <laughs> you know, that seems so bad now. Like now, like they're like, <laughs> well, I swear I saw that guy in a different business because the, the only reason I know this was because I was uh, on, uh, on, I saw a sponsored ad on Facebook a while ago and it was this, uh, this chick and she was doing a video testimonial and there was all these hate comments on this business sponsored post because there were these people like, hey, I've seen her do this post. She must just whore herself out to do testimonials. How dare you, you know, hurt this brand? Like, you know, how dare the brand lie to us all? I was like, man, that's that's rough. <laughs> I feel bad for this well, poor girl that's probably in a third world country and just wants to make her five dollars. <laughs> she doesn't care. She's out there balling. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> She's anyway. like, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm done. <laughs> She's bought a um, house off of testimonials. It's great. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> I got to get out there to one of those countries. Yeah, well, I actually just came back from the Philippines because I'm starting a new startup in uh, 2018. So I went there to learn more about outsourcing. You know, so it's in web design support. And uh, yeah, it was it was crazy, man. Like it's really interesting with just the the different levels of wealth over there. Like 
for the two winners are in the world. Three of them are in uh, the Philippines. And um, yeah, that, then you go the other end of the spectrum and the hotel I stayed at was amazing. And I was like, well, why is this so nice? I don't understand how, why it's so cheap. And it turns out this surrounding area was like poor as fuck. So I was like, all right, this got sketchy. <laughs> and, uh, and it was because I actually did a, uh, on my YouTube channel, I did a vlog just to like really show everyone what it was like because um, it was a business trip. It was mostly just out of the, the windows with my phone, just kind of showing everyone the scenes, um, which is still a unique perspective on it because, you know, you're not going to see that elsewhere. But there was one street I genuinely didn't feel comfortable filming because I was walking back from the zoo, which was sketchy as, and then, um, I actually felt uncomfortable enough to like do up my back pocket where my wallet was. Um, and I was walking down this one street, which was in the CBD as well. And it's just, uh, the reason I bring this up is cause you're saying, oh, she's bought herself a house from uh, all these video testimonials. But one street was just all these tents of people living in tents. Um, and like these empty cement bags and just, it was, you know, it was sad, but at the same time I was like, wow, like, how is this possible? So yeah, who knows? Maybe four testimonials and she has got herself a house. I mean, maybe, but yeah, man, I wouldn't have been out there like that. Like, no, I don't walk on streets like that anymore. I don't yeah, well, they're like, oh, <laughs> I was over there and they're like, oh, you, you don't have any contacts over here? And I was like, no, I just bought a plane ticket and I've come over. And they're like, uh, Westerners don't usually do that. <laughs> I was like, whoops. <laughs> have you ever uh, heard of Compton? Man, I grew up with Compton. Like, Ice Cube, Easy e they're some of my favorite I, artists. Okay, so... I thought you were going to be like, no, what's that? I was going to be like, you should vacation out there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I grew up on that. Nice those those guys are, they're, they're my, you know, my NWA was one of my first favorite, not only groups, but just entrepreneurs, like people to just not mimic what they were offering as a service, but to just value what they did. Like I, I learned so much from those guys. Like, yeah, man, Compton, absolutely. Humble yeah, beginnings. Well, don't ever... Don't go to Compton. <laughs> okay. All right. No Compton. Okay. <laughs> Never. <laughs>